More Bondo! <laughs> back on the 1949 GMC 100 and lo and behold it's part four of the bed reworking or the repair of the wood bed. So stay tuned and let's get busy. Right here you can see where I'm going to get a little bit unconventional and I'm going to mark that's a two inch angle iron and I'm going to mark it on the uh, front plate here the front uh, box panel and see how high that is above the rust spot and we'll see what I'm going to do for repair there well here's what I've been waiting for and it ends up I may not need it but I'm going to try it to cut here Right, and see what I can do. It's an off name brand, but it says it'll do 14 gauge. So, and this is probably, well, this is not 14 gauge, but it's not that thick. So, we're going to kind of see what this will do. All right, I didn't want one of these for a while. Boys and girls, is how you cut it. <laughs> yeah. All right. This says it'll do up to 14 gauge. Well, this is probably, I don't know, this is either 16 or 18, probably eight. That's pretty thick though. And it just went through it like hot butter. So, there you go. A new tool and it works. Man, that's about, that's great. <laughs> so, let's see if we can get into what we can do with that now. So much bondo behind there may even be more damage. Let me see.
More Bondo! <laughs> got a little crooked because my moved in the vise, but that's all right. I'm not trying to be precise. It'll do.
Well, I got him just tacked in. I'll, uh, I'm gonna fit everything and then I'll worry about finishing that weld up later. It ain't going anywhere. these fasteners here to fasten the angle iron to the front uh, bed sill or plate. Right. This is quarter 20. put seven so I'm gonna put seven on down to secure the angle iron to the plate
The reason why I'm having to drill them out is because I drill them only quarter inch holes and these uh, quarter inch inserts need a, uh, oh, what did I read there? It was a 2364th minimum. So, and when I did my markings, I could be off a little bit. So that's why I'm checking as I'm going. Once I do the first crimp, I like to spin it four more times and to get that final crimp in there. what the back side looks like with the uh, inserts all right and it, what the good thing is it's pulled the plate up or the front uh, body piece up here bed piece straight too so anyway there we go all right let's see if we can draw that in I've, uh, I've notched it would have been better if this would have been three inch or even two and a half inch instead of just two but it's all I could find but it's going to be enough so that notch I can swing that and swing them uh, offset washers over and that'll hold them down all right all right really the only way to get the bolts on these uh, 12 inch long uh, carriage bolts is to go underneath so Got to go underneath. Maybe I won't fall asleep. We'll see. All right. Still learning how to use how much torque that bad boy's got, so I'm gonna use it. Oh yeah, he's on there. Yeah. 
Okay. All right. Well, we've got the front bed panel bolted in. We've got the bed bolted down to the frame utilizing pads underneath the uh, wood blocks and the spacers on the brand new cross sill. Now, I guess I could have taken the uh, carriage bolt through the wood I'm going to have on top because it is going to make it lump a little bit. But I can live with that or I can even notch out the wood there on the bottom to fit around that. That would have been just too much custom fitting to suit my taste. And uh, when I just didn't feel it was necessary. Although it would have been nice. I'm still contemplating on using the uh, uh, self tappers to secure the wood to the sills and to the side. But I'm still thinking on that. Uh, I got this major hurdle down right here, so now I can move on to uh, working on the other aspects. Getting this floater bolted back up is one thing, but all right, feel like I'm finally getting something accomplished getting this permanently bolted in. And you can see how the wood's going to go butt up to it. And uh, I don't know if I'm going to worry about filling in between the uh, the nut, the you know, the bolt head and the uh, actual frame. Like I say, I can notch it, but this isn't a show truck, it's a work truck. And it'll, uh, we'll be able to secure stuff down. So anyway, like I said, this is unconventional, what I'm doing. And I'm utilizing as much uh, spare stuff from my stash as I can. So anyway. All right, that's a rough layman of the wood just to get a count and an idea of how many I'm going to need and how they fit. What do we have here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. 14 full pieces. Then we got a trim piece here to make up the, uh, to take up the slack, which is about two thirds. I could measure it, but uh, my tape measure is way over there and I don't feel like walking. But anyway, so here you can get a lay of the land. Told you it was going to be unconventional. Uh, it's going to be very serviceable once I get it secured. So what I'm doing now is uh, putting thought to how I'm going to secure the boards down uh, to the uh, cross sills. And I think I've got a plan, but I'm going to ponder on it more. Just right now, I just wanted to get a good idea of how the, of the fitment. So anyway, that's it. Just lay it in there. longer to get that uh, front panel the way I wanted it and uh, I thought I'd go ahead and put the wood just lay the wood in now just to get a good feel about how it'll go together so I think I've got a, a final plan coming up so it looks like we will have a part five <laughs> of the ongoing saga of the bed repair of this 1949 GMC so stay tuned for that uh, upcoming part five and uh, I guess we'll see you then. So thanks for watching. Hope all's going good with you and yours. Going good here. So take it easy. And we'll see you around on the next one. See you.